third outing of John Wick has exploded onto the big screen, so let's talk about it. John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum picks up right where the previous film left off with John Wick on the run for his life. With that in mind, you do need to have seen the previous two John Wick films to understand this film, and I would recommend re-watching them before you go into this film. With that in mind, go ahead and share your take on the film down below in the comment section. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did it live up to your expectations? Did it disappoint you? And how do you feel about the franchise in general? This video is going to be a spoiler-free review, but after I give my score for the film, I'm going to give a spoiler warning and then I'm going to talk about some very specific plot points in the film and spoil kind of the end of the film because there's some things I wanted to discuss. So just so you're aware, that will happen at the very end of this video. With that said, let's get started talking about the good. And it almost goes without saying, but the best thing about this film is the action. The franchise has grown a reputation for having excellent choreography that's shot very well, and that is all true with this film as well. This time it's a little bit more visceral. There's more gore in the mix. There's more moments where you go, oh, ooh, oh, oh. my whole audience did that multiple times throughout the entire film. And they also take all of the cool choreography and take everything to that next level. The action is bigger, but just as clever. There's all sorts of little elements where they tried to find what would be fun to do in this specific environment that would be unique and interesting. And as you go throughout the stunt work, there's multiple situations in the film where you're going, I don't know how they shot that. I don't know how a human could have done that thing. I know that I'm watching a special effect, but I've never seen this technique before. So it seems a lot like they invented new ways to do action fight choreography for this film. I mean, as you go through the film, horses get involved in fights, dogs get very involved in one of the fight scenes. There's a whole sequence that's a long take motion motorcycle chase fight sequence that I've never seen anything shot the way that this was shot before. Everything is done with wide shots. You always know what John Wick or the people around him are doing. This is top notch. This is the best action that Hollywood is putting out. From there, you gotta talk about the cast. Of course, Keanu Reeves is excellent in this role. It's like a character designed to amplify all the best things about him as a physical performer, as well as as an actor, and it minimizes some of his weaknesses, and this film does all of that even more so than the previous films. Add to the mix, you get Halle Berry, and she's actually a really great addition. She is just as in involved in the action as Keanu Reeves is. You're seeing her throwing punches, kicks, shooting guys in the face. She very clearly went to the Keanu Reeves school of stunt work or wherever he learned to do this stuff. She is all in as well. And there's a very cool sequence in the middle of the film with her. Add to the mix, you got Mark Dacascos as one of our villains. That was a great addition. I'm a big fan of his 90s martial arts action films. I grew up watching several of them, like Only the Strong, Drive. And so I was very pleasantly surprised to see him in this film. And he, he has a nice little character in there. Of course, he does the action, but his character kind of has this quirky way that he does humor inside of it that's a nice little touch. And of course, it's always great to see Ian McShane inside of these films. This movie, he's more kind of tied into the plot line of what's going on, as well as given a bit more of an arc for his character. You get more nuance and depth as he's more plugged into everything that's happening. Another nice touch for this film is it's got a little bit more humor. These films have always had a little bit of a wink at the audience, a touch of dry humor that kind of cuts the tension in some of the moments. This movie cranks that up a little bit. I already mentioned kind of Mark Dacascos being one of those characters that goes between being deadly, very serious, and then having these little lines that are really funny. But there's a lot of stuff like that inside of the film. And finally, with the John Wick films, they've always done a great job of finding environments that are very cool. So everything looks gorgeous. Where they're having these cool action sequences, looks equally cool and all of that is true here we're going to new places different places globe trotting all of that stuff that you enjoyed about the previous films there's more of it here with that said let's move on to the mixed aspects of the film first thing that comes to mind is the world building one of the best things about the first two films is they crafted this big gigantic world with all these rules and the continental that you really enjoyed learning more about this film i think we got to the point in time where i think they're stepping over the line a little bit 
and the rules, the nature of all of it is starting to get more frustrating and convoluted. And so I think they went a little bit too far with this film. Second mixed aspect is the pacing. This movie starts off with this extreme sense of urgency. It picks up almost right after the previous film ended. John Wick is on the run. There's a literal kind of ticking clock going on and you just feel this forward momentum, a sense of tension and danger. And it keeps on going for about the first 25 minutes of the film. And then kind of the more distinct plot of this film kicks in and it's like they just took their foot off the gas. Things kind of slow down for about 25 minutes and then it picks back up. There's the urgency, there's the danger again. And that's kind of the way the movie does its pacing. It's either pedal to the metal or we're way off the gas and things slow down a good bit. And so it seemed like they could have evened that out a little bit. And one more thing on the mixed category, because they're setting up so many awesome, very cool action sequences and shots, the movie frequently uses that action movie trope where guys attack our lead protagonist one at a time instead of just swarming the guy all at once. And that was something I noticed from time to time. From there, let's move on to the bad. The big thing that comes to mind is for a movie that has a very simple, straightforward plot line, there's a whole lot going on and a bunch of ideas that are teased but not really explored. Like you could describe this movie in just about three sentences pretty accurately, but the way they execute those three sentences, it's like they keep stacking layers on top of layers and backstories and little details for every single small little plot point. So for example, the first act of the film, and this isn't really a spoiler, is about John Wick trying to get away from the dense section of New York City. That's a very straightforward, simple idea of what he's trying to do. But the way it does this is that it stacks on layers of past relationships, past friendships, his origin story, all these ideas that aren't really explored. They're just kind of put there to make a very simple plot line have more depth to it. And every single plot point in this movie feels like that. Simple plot point with a whole bunch of layers. Now, it's a good thing in a movie for it to feel like a lived in world and like our character has past relationships with people. And that was one of the really good things about the first two films. But here it feels a little bit like they're introducing too many ideas that they don't have enough time to fully explore. They're just kind of putting them out there. And at times it feels like they're putting complexity on these simple plot points just so that they can add these cool shots inside of the movie. Like, hey, we want to go to this location. I've got this idea for a shot of John Wick in a desert. So let's put this on top of this on top of this. When for the actual sake of the story, you could have done it a much easier fashion. And finally, I didn't think the story came to a satisfying conclusion. There's ideas and plot lines introduced inside of the film that didn't come to a full resolution. I'll elaborate on this after I give my final score because I need to kind of go into spoilers to say exactly what I mean with that. Remember to share your take on the film down below in the comment section. Did you love it? Did you hate it? All of that fun stuff. Also, after this video, check out this playlist up above where I rank some of my favorite action movie franchises of all time. If you enjoyed John Wick, there's a franchise up there that you will absolutely love. In summary, this is a movie that absolutely delivers on the most important thing it must deliver on, which is the action and it's probably going to have the best action of the entire year but on the story level this was probably the weakest of the stories inside of this franchise i'm gonna go with a b plus and an 8.5 on the entertainment scale and this is a must see for action fans with my score stated i'm going to dive into some spoilers in three two one. So this movie ends much like the previous film, teasing a sequel. But I felt that the previous film resolved the story inside of that film, but the resolution is John Wick taking out the bad guy of the film, thus creating the scenario for the next film, the next storyline, so you could have that cliffhanger that made sense. This film, I didn't think came to any sort of resolution, as if the movie didn't know exactly what its plot line was about other than for John Wick to survive for two more hours. Because we get to the end of the film and the same group of people still want John Wick dead. They're still trying to track him down. They're still trying to shoot him and he's still not dead. That's not really a resolution to John Wick's storyline. By the end of the film, we have the resolution to Ian McShane's plotline. We know where his character is going, where his true allegiances are and what he's trying to do. But John Wick is essentially in the exact same place at the end of this film as he was at the beginning, in which case it's like, okay, we just spent two hours with him. 
This is getting a little bit exhausting just having him on the run trying to shoot these guys. And I didn't leave this film like, yeah, I can't wait for the next one. I went, okay, I wanted him to shoot the adjudicator in the face. I wanted him to kill Ian McShane. I wanted him to take out the whole high table at the end of this film. I don't want the movie to end and it's like, come back and that's probably what he's gonna do next time. So that was a little bit frustrating for me. If you're gonna comment on the end of the film down below in the comment section, just put spoiler at the beginning too warn people that you're about to spoil things. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.